topics, themes. Jumping off of undoing linear time last night. There's the microphone. Coming back down. Um, last night's movie um, reiterated to me the question, what are emotions for? Um, because as I listen to everyone, um, it sounds like everybody's just realizing they have emotions and expressing them. And my whole life, as a, as a young child, I've always been told you express too much, you have too much emotions. I'm very passionate, I feel so deeply. So it's like the last 15 years of my life, I've been trying to neutralize my emotions because there's so much intensity that when I speak, it's like I feel that I'm gonna blow open walls or something. And in fact, um, a companion friend that's been on the, I've uh, been on the path with it. I mean, part of her thoughts was, I just have to be quiet, just drop it, don't feel anything. And in the last year, um, well, the last 15 years of my life, it's just like all those emotions have presented such drama, trauma in my life. I go, what the heck just happened here? <laughs> you know, and it culminated um, as my son transitioned last year and a friend left and, and I have all these feelings and emotions and at the same time, my son is talking to me all the time. I'm fine, Mom. <laughs> you know, I, I saw him. Um, he was dancing when he knew I was coming here. And my other children sent me, this is where Mom's got to go. <laughs> you know, and... Um, but when I go into those places of stillness that I love so much, I'm kind of like that movie. It's like, what are all these emotions for? Because all I've gotten... To, all I feel like I've gotten to have emotions is chastised for them. So I'm just making my mouth shut. <laughs> it's just easier. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a question or it is, but help me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, that's why I would always tell her Mel, because she had such intense emotions. And I would just see that, when I hear that, it's such a blessing, because I see how how helpful it is on the spiritual journey to be in touch with your emotions. You know, there's, there can be layers of denial and repression where it's more of like a numbing out, which is more like the standard of the world. That's why you don't feel you fit in. That's the standard, you know. You know, uh, I remember that Mike Myers character with me and many me, you know, Austin Powers, if you go, zip it, zip it, zip it, zip it. You know, it's like, this is, this is a zip it universe, <laughs> you know, how many of us as children remember, you know, don't, don't speak about it, don't talk about it, whether it was conscious rules or they were unconscious rules of the family. You don't, we don't talk about those things, we don't express emotions. I was, also that was my environment, not only the whole world, but was with the family environment, it was, yeah. don't ever let that happen again, you know. Children are to be seen and not heard. So zip it in whatever way. So I actually think that's a blessing and and the blessing of it is that as we learned from Jesus, you have but two emotions. Love and fear. And everything that we would say is part of the rainbow or the, the peacock tail is is a derivative of one of those, we say peace and joy, happiness, you know, they're all, that's love. We know it in our hearts. And then fear, guilt, shame, pain, even fatigue, you know, anything that's not supremely happy, you know, is, is there. And the ego made a very complicated world, including the complicated emotional patterns, to disguise itself and to get away from the simplicity that there's a choice to be made which the movie was really taking us into. There's a choice to be made. It's a present decision. The past is not causing us anything. You know, we can choose to hang on to it or to let it go. We can choose the 
unselective present moment experience of the Holy Spirit, or we can use the selective remembering of the ego, which is always involves judgments and preferences. So, what has seemed to be, you know, a negative for you, is, and I would tell Armel this all the time, is what a blessing. I, I just love transparency. Um, I've even used the example of my little three-legged cat tripod. So transparent. It's either like still and twirling tail and happy dancing and peaceful, or you know about it. If, if she needs to be fed, there's no mistake. If she needs to get out a door that's closed, no mistake. And you know, it's so transparent and it's so wonderful. I, I've come to appreciate the, tra the transparency of those who wear their emotions out on their sleeve. Because I see how helpful that is for the whole universe. It's not something that you need to tone it down and bottle it up and zip it and push it down out of awareness. Uh, a lot of my trips to uh, Argentina, Colombia, South America, I encounter what I call the macho man. And the macho man is like the old John Wayne, strong and silent and non-expressive. No, oh, there's emotions still going on in there, but it's almost like a, a, a firm mask, you know. Macho, macho man, you know. And so, then I go to South America and I just go down there and I'm happy myself, just shining, sharing, happy, happy, happy. I go to, to like, um, Argentina and, and I just do these awakening enlightenment gatherings and uh, it's like 97% women in the gatherings, in the enlightenment gatherings. So then I go over, I have off to Colombia, about 93% women. And I go, and it's maybe in the 80s, um, over in Venezuela. And I'm like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm inviting everyone. <laughs> I don't think there's, I'm not like Robert Redford or something. I don't think the women are like showing up <laughs> for this character. A hairless wonder. Uh, you know, the numbers are, there's a high group of women, but it, it has to be something else going on. And, it, and the more I would be pray with it in this Holy Spirit, it was like, well, it's not a male-female thing. It's, it's an emotional thing. It's that when you shut off your emotions, you also shut off getting in touch with the thought system that's underneath those emotions. And you shut off getting in touch with the beliefs that are underneath those thoughts. So it would be like to use like a dentistry analogy of just working on the tops of the teeth you know, if you had decay going on in the roots, or you had had a hole that went down, you know, a dentist would tell you, well, you can't just put a crown on top of decay. You've got to do the root canal work, you've got to get underneath there. Similarly with the mind, emotions are right under the perceptual realm, and it's great that you feel such intensity. Doesn't, I'm sure there's times when you've thought it's a curse, not a blessing. Yeah, I don't know how to personalize it because I take everything personal. Yeah. This is all my fault. Yeah. No wonder my back hurts. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm carrying all the weight of the world on my back. Yeah. And that's, I guess, trying to be quiet is the way I've been trying to practice in personalization. And. As you said, I know the fact that I've had such joy and I'm still feeling such pain, I need, I, whatever's going on underneath, I want it out so I can be free. And if the emotions are good while I'm on this planet, then I want it only to be used for joy. You know, that, that's my intention. Yeah, it's so great that you're bringing this whole thing up because when, when there's such intensity, then the ego will quickly judge against that, say that's bad, that's wrong. And let's just be still. And it can turn into what I would call like a spiritual bypass. Maybe you can pass the mic up to Suzanne, because since we've known each other, I mentioned last night to Jody that this was a very eclectic retreat center with lamas and monks and 
and Native Americans and a great deep tradition. And, and uh, Suzanne was actually practicing the Course for quite a number of years, and, and kind of starting to tend towards where you were saying, like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit and be still. I'm doing the old traditional sit and be still way, and then that actually, she went through a huge transformation that I think some of you have heard the story in the parable, but actually it, it, it has, it seems to relate to exactly what you're talking about right now. Yeah, it, it, it sounds like you're caught in the same thing that I was, which was I was trying to manage my healing. And um, it's a big difference. When I met David, I had been stuck in this loop of trying to just manage my anger, manage uh, any kind of contraction that would come up in my mind. And uh, I would sit in meditation, and I thought I was practicing forgiveness. I thought I was practicing by saying, it's just an illusion. This can't be real. It has to be about me. You know, and I would just turn it in on myself. And I was very sincere about it. I thought that that was really what the Course was asking. And I kept hearing this, this voice saying I needed to go deeper, and then David's teachings came in. And I got to see that I had been trying to manage, and I, I really wasn't healing. I was just stuck in this loop. And so, the beauty of being able to authentically express, um, of course it's just an illusion, but we believe in it. And the Holy Spirit will meet us where we're at. So we have to allow that meeting to take place. We can't just keep pushing it out of awareness. That's what the, the ego wants us to do, is just keep managing it, keep putting on a happy face, keep trying to be happy. And what we do here in this community is we let it rip. We really let the emotion up. And, and the expression sessions were the most powerful um, healing force that I encountered. And I had done everything. I had done shamanic work, I had done all sorts of things. But when I actually started getting in touch with um, the feelings and allowing them up, of course it's like a prayer, it's like lifting it up to the Holy Spirit, but underneath it is where all the, the truth is. But while we're trying to manage, then we can't, we can't experience that. And, and I remember it was about the fifth day of my first encounters with expression sessions. And the first five days I was in total judgment, like, as Sarah was there, I was like, oh yeah, sure, she's got it really a lot going on over there. And I was just judging everybody. And on the fifth day, I, something came in and I realized what they're saying means absolutely nothing about them. And what I'm saying means absolutely nothing about me. And I just got a glimpse of it, like, oh my God, this is freedom. It's like, it's like the two thought systems, but they don't cross. They do not cross. So we have to align our minds with the truth in our mind. And the only way to do that is to let the, let the, the haze of the ego up and out. And so it's beautiful to just be able to, uh, you know, come to retreats. And there's a process on our website called the Clarity Process to start to practice that with somebody you trust. I mean, you wouldn't just go out and do that with just anybody. But that's what I'm saying, just explore it while you're here. Just like really allow this darkness in the mind to come up and the emotion, and then underneath it, the Holy Spirit, it's just instantaneous. It's like you start to feel that lightning up in the mind. So, yeah, it's a real, uh, it's a spiritual trap, you know. I need to do nothing, it's just an illusion. These are very profound teachings in The Course in Miracles, but there's a lot of undoing in order to get into the experience of those things, so, yeah. The, the planning process, I actually, um, I do it at home by myself. <laughs> oh, oh, it's, it's, yeah, you don't have to have somebody else. If you're there by yourself, you're never there by yourself. The Holy Spirit, but it's, it's like this authentic feeling of, it's not about just dumping stuff out. It's authentically wanting the peace of God instead of my grievance, or instead of my own self-judgment, or whatever it is. It's, it's such a deep, it's like there's a, a quote in the Bible about going in your closet and praying. It's like there's this deep feeling of, I want the peace of God more than I want this, uh, this uh, error in my mind. So we're only responsible for the correction, not the error. The error is not true. We just need to lift it up and yeah, just to continue with that and just to start to get in touch with those feelings, which is what you're doing. I'm coming to a place that's safe because I, on the, the mainland of Indiana, um, I always felt like I tried to provide a safe place for people to do just that. But I didn't feel I had 
<laughs> yeah, like on the airplane, when the masks come down, you gotta do your, your own oxygen first, and then, then you can extend it. Yeah, and I think I just would add too that that the reason emotions are, are pushed down and kept down and repressed is because there's there's a tremendous fear of rejection. I mean, all of us have adapted and we followed the ego's plan. We've adapted and adjusted. We put on masks. I mean, right away we should know we must believe that we're hiding something if we're wearing masks, and we do that emotionally too. We we keep like. Like uh, you were just saying, our emotions under wraps because it's a fear of rejection. So it doesn't matter whether it's a family or a partner or coming even to a group. It's like, well, I don't want to let the storm really come up because the group will eject me out and say, well, we don't need, need that uh, here. And actually, the community is a symbol of the exact opposite of that where it's, it's when you're given full permission and you're actually encouraged to get in touch with your emotions and for whatever rational ego reasons you come up with, you don't, then you will probably end up taking yourself out of the community instead of getting thrown out. It's, it's the ones that come and really express and let it rip and rip and go, wow, I feel so much better. Uh, and they aren't rejected at all. They're, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, that's great. It's, it's happening, it's happening. It's where you have the permission, but you don't really give yourself permission for whatever reasons. That it just, again, it gets pushed down, and it, then it comes out as psychosomatic, or it, it comes bursting out as rage after you've bottled and bottled and bottled it for months or years or decades, you know. Then, oh, I wonder what went on. I ended up in the psych ward, <laughs> you know, after <laughs> bottling it for decades, you know, and then letting it up. Laura's a counselor, so she knows. She would, let it up, let it up, let it out. So I think that's another reason, you know, why we, we really do encourage it. Because it's not, there's not going to be a sense of rejection or being ejected out. It's, it's more of, no, that's a, that's a good thing. Sundari. Okay, um, so this is a continuation, sort of, of that question. Um, uh, when I think of emotions, um, I think of them, uh, since the script is already written, uh, I think of them as the, in a sense, Holy Spirit's leash to lead us in the directions we need to go. Uh, or in the direction everything already happened already. And so it seems to me that functionally emotions are um, the modality of the script already being written. And I just kind of wondered your, you know, comment or thought on that. Yeah, I, I see it as, it's like, you know, if you had a funnel, and you know a funnel is very broad at the top and then it gets very, very narrow at the bottom. If you took uh, the unholy instant, which is the time of terror, which is this crazy mad idea that you could separate from God, and we just call it the unholy instant. And then we call the holy instant this instant of pure innocence and pure happiness and joy. You can see the right mind associates with the holy instant, and the wrong mind associates with the unholy instant. And if you took all those emotions and you just boiled them down, the unholy instant is terror and the holy instant is love. And so, I see where you're heading with this, is that there, there is a base, there is a, a simplicity that comes, and, and emotions are very much used by the Holy Spirit uh, they're very practical. I think of them as like barometers. Like if you had almost like a little uh, barometer hooked right to your, your waist or your belt, and you p paid so close attention to that, that would really help you zoom into the right mind. Because you wouldn't be tempted to be interpreting, well, this happened and that happened, and 
this happened so many years ago and it was a trauma and I have, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder from when the time when I fought this war or did this thing. In this lifetime, sometimes people even go searching for traumas in past lifetime regression, you know, as if they're going to find it back in history. And, you know, what we're saying is that all the emotions help you really tune in to pay very close attention as an inroads to, to choosing peace, choosing the holy instant, choosing the right mind. So it's, I would say it's extremely helpful. That's, that's why we don't dismiss emotions, because they, they are taking us in with the, you know, used by the Holy Spirit, they take us right into the correction. Very important. That's what I've emphasized, like in South America, it's, you know, oftentimes with the couples will come to me and and the woman is expanding and opening seemingly very rapidly, and her husband or partner is not. And it's, it's almost like there's a, an, an imbalance in the awakening that starts to occur, when one's allowing fully t and using the emotions in a very helpful way, and one is not, then that's where it, there can be some shifts. But, but ultimately, it, it, it's meant to be simple, it's meant to to bring you into the simplicity of the moment.